Why is this EKG important and why do cardiologists care? This EKG is an example of WPW, or Wolf-Parkinson-White pattern. WPW is where an accessory pathway exists in the heart, which is an abnormal connection from the top chamber, or the atria, to the bottom chamber, or the ventricle. This accessory pathway can be seen on an EKG when you see a short PR interval and a wide QRS complex. Normally, the SA node, where the sinus node originates, goes to the AV node, which is the middle, and then down to both ventricles. When there's this accessory pathway, that P wave, which represents the atrial depolarization or the depolarization of the top chamber, sneaks down this accessory pathway and gets to the ventricle a little bit sooner than it should. That's why we see that short PR interval and a wide QRS shown with that delta wave. Now, earlier in the video, I also mentioned that if you have this EKG abnormality, you have WPW pattern. The reason that we call it WPW pattern is that that's just an EKG abnormality. That's a squiggly line finding. But if that is in combination with symptoms, that's when you have WPW syndrome. Remember that the EKG is just a pattern, but the clinical syndrome that might include palpitations, lightheadedness, episode of syncope, that is where you have WPW syndrome. So why do we care about WPW pattern or this EKG finding that we see? For some patients, it can be completely benign and they never have any repercussions of it. However, patients who have this WPW pattern are known to have a slightly higher risk of developing atrial fibrillation or other SVTs in their lifetime. And when their heart rate goes at an exceedingly fast pace in these abnormal heart rhythms, they are prone to going down those accessory pathways and can induce VT and VF which can kill you. Now it's exceedingly rare that that happens, but it's a higher chance than someone who doesn't have that same abnormality on their EKG. So how do we figure out if they are high risk or low risk? How do we figure out what we're gonna do about this? One of the things that we like to do is perform an exercise stress test. We essentially take the patient, put them on a treadmill, and have them exercise and increase their heart rate while we have EKG leads hooked up to them so that we can see, does that accessory pathway conduct at fast heart rates? Or what would indicate a low risk pathway is that the electrical system that is intrinsic to the heart takes over and becomes the dominant rhythm. So we should see that wider QRS get more narrow with an increasing heart rate. What that tells us is that at higher heart rates, the intrinsic rhythm of the heart is the predominant conduction system that is being used. Kind of like if there's a traffic jam somewhere else, you're going down the main highway. Versus patients that might exhibit higher risks are those who conduct down that accessory pathway at faster heart rates. Instead of going down the main highway, they're finding side roads to get through. Again, that puts patients at a higher risk of if they do develop AFib or other SVTs, supraventricular tachycardias, that it can conduct down that pathway and back up and kind of make a closed circuit loop which can deteriorate into VT or ventricular tachycardia, VFib, ventricular fibrillation, and kill you. So what do we do about this? Thankfully, ablation procedures are about 98.5% curative, meaning electrophysiologists, if we need to, are able to go in through the groin, thread a catheter up to the heart, and ablate or burn little areas of tissue to stop that electrical system from conducting down. And for the most part, people are able to live pretty normal lives. For our medical trainees, remember that if you see AFib with aberrancy going at a very fast heart rate, like we see in this EKG, you want to avoid AV nodal blocking agents. And the answer on the test is going to be a sodium channel blocker like procainamide. That preferentially will stop conduction down that accessory pathway and send it back down that main conduction system of the heart. In these patients, it's important to avoid AV nodal blocking agents, particularly adenosine. If you give a patient adenosine, you're gonna be blocking that AV node and send all the electrical conduction down that accessory pathway. And again, that causes that closed loop where it's gonna go down that accessory pathway and then back up the normal conduction system and keep going and going and going. It can be very challenging to figure out, is it VT, is it SVT with aberrancy? If your patient is unstable, you can always shock them. For the cardiology fellows, interestingly, if you see a patient at rest and their EKG shows alternating wide and normal QRS complexes indicating aberrant and normal conduction pathways, those patients are considered low risk and do not need any further testing. I hope you enjoyed this quick review of WPW. As always, follow, like, share. I'll try to do a new EKG every week.